Joining us on the phone today is the director, uh, UBS director of floor operations, Art Cashin. Art, it's a good day to touch base with you. Uh, how do you characterize uh, the selling this morning? Well, I, I, I think, um, as you know, Carl, because you usually see my uh, daily comments. Uh, yesterday, I was looking for a possible interim high this morning, early pre-dawn. It didn't look like that was going to happen. This does look like it's working out. I think what you're seeing, and you alluded to this somewhat earlier in the program, there were rumors around about institutional call buying. Uh, there were people said to be making large bets that the number was going to be favorable. And I think that's what you're seeing. It's not so much that uh, the number came out and it flipped the economy on its head. I think what we're seeing here is a structural within the market. Um, and I think those guys were caught off base. They're probably leveraged. So you had an absolutely horrendous washout on the opening. I mean, you, you, numbers are wild. And as you also alluded to, we're facing a near-term test here at 4,000. In a couple of days, we might be retesting that 3,900 level. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we, we think you're into a seasonal pattern. We think, uh, thanks to our friend Jonathan Stevens, we're, we're looking at an analog to 1962 in the Dow Jones. We're about a week ahead of that pattern. Um, and that's going to make for a very bumpy October. So uh, keep your seatbelt fastened is my advice. Right. Yeah, we know about seasonality in September and sort of midterm tempos in midterm years. Does, do you think, though, that the classic midterm uh, post-reaction for fourth quarter could be as strong as, it, as history suggests? Well, it could be. Again, if, if it is an analog to 62, um, the, the Democrats may be happy because while they lost a handful of seats in 62, it was um, an interim election for them, and they held on to control of both the House and the Senate. So we'll see how that goes. But I'm more concerned, Carl, about in 62 October, saw the Cuban Missile Crisis, and I hope that's not an analog with uh, Taiwan as the two most powerful nations on the face of the earth go nose to nose over a large island right off the boundaries of one of them. Mm. Um, it's, it's, it's scary and tempting both to look at. So I, I think this is the internals. You've got to watch the technicals here. Uh, you break the 4,000. If in a couple of days we trust the test, the 3,900, that will be critical because you break 3,900, then you get down around 3,800 and beyond that land there'd be dragons <laughs> but are you seem to think we are going to test 3900 uh, it's it's my gut feel i think we may even go back and retest the june lows although i don't get uh, many of my friends agreeing on that but uh, certainly the 3900 is just so tempting and you're pulling back below uh, the 50-day moving average here so it's very much about the technicals it's not so much that that one number meant the economy went topsy-turvy. It meant a lot of guys who were making um, a preliminary favorable bet got caught off base, and they're leveraged, and they had to purge it out on the opening. And I think uh, my yardstick tells me uh, we'll, we'll uh, probably have a minor downswing now um, that will last several days yeah. and uh, see where we go. What's our next data point, Art, that we're going to care about? Uh, or is it just going to be the Fed itself? Well, it, it, it probably will be the Fed itself. You know, they're in the silent period. Nobody's going to be speaking up. Uh, you are going to have to watch what's going on offshore. Um, you know, in, in a very unique circumstance, the central banks all around the world, with the exception of Japan and perhaps China, are uh, hiking rates and hiking them at, uh, you know, the, the, the Bank of Australia's uh, jumped 75 basis points. That's almost unheard of for those people. So I think the key data point will be what the Fed itself does, but we'll be getting hints around uh, the globe and, and watch what looks to be an imminent uh, recession. And, and, David, I'll give you another wild card, is also mm -hmm. keep an eye on Ukraine. I mean, if they're 
if they come back and look as strong as they have in the last three days or so, if we get to force the Russians to the table with an armistice, that changes, <clears throat> excuse me, that changes a lot of things, including the price of oil. So this may be a, a geopolitical market as much as it is uh, one word about interest rates. Yeah. Hey, finally, Art, you know, for a Fed chair who got beat up quite a bit for, for missing the underlying trend on inflation last fall, uh, how much uh, credibility th do you think he gets back uh, post Jackson Hole and post a print like this? Well, I, I, I think he, he will, by what they do over the next couple of months, get that credibility back. But you're absolutely right. The word transitory has hung around his neck like an albatross uh, ever since he said it. And he, he's got to get away from that. He's got to. I, I see what I see. I know what I see. And I'm going to react to what I know. And that's that's a bit of a tough fight. But you're right. That 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 is important to the market. Have you been surprised at how many uh, macro strategists are have been calling for, uh, I guess, uh, leaning toward the soft landing scenario and away from global recession? Uh, J.P. Morgan, pretty constructive comments. Again, this is all pre-CPI. Uh, but Credit Suisse talking about inflation moderating. Morgan Stanley was looking for a seven handle today. Why do you think some of them are, are, are so optimistic? Do you think they're being sort of seduced by uh, the, the decline in, in energy costs? Yeah, no, I think the energy costs have gotten uh, everybody off base here. Uh, you know, they've been going down. People see they're going to influence the election. People are assuming, well, that will filter through. You know, when they're going up, we always talk about how important they are. When you buy food, it gets delivered by truck. You know, so energy is virtually everywhere. Um, and I think it is. Oh, I'm not an economist by any means, but uh, I think it's very seductive to see that and assume if you were forced to guess ahead of time. Um, well, I kind of lean toward it weakening. Um, Luckily, I'm not an economist, and I haven't been leaning that way. Yeah. Finally, Art, I guess back to this 62 comparison. Just sort of take me through. You said we're, we're a couple of weeks behind. So what, what do we have to look for next year? No, we're actually a, a, a week ahead. Oh, and, excuse me, uh, a week ahead. Sorry. And we, we uh, the next swing or the bottom can be somewhere around the year. Uh, uh, autumnal equinox, and, and that, you know, that'll be the 25th, 22nd, 25th. So there's a chance that this laid down can last actually that long. I doubt it, but it can. And uh, so if we're looking at that uh, 62 analog, uh, we want to see what happens around the time of the autumnal equinox when they would be due to try for one last move to the upside before going into a Rather ugly October. Yep. Mercury, <laughs> Mercury in retrograde also, Art. we got a lot of things working <laughs> against us. Art, thank yeah, you. Yeah. You, you, Art, you have to get your uh, uh, telescope out, Carl. We'll be ready. <laughs> we'll see you next time.